Welcome to CMMNJ TV. Every 42 seconds, someone is arrested for marijuana. I'm Ken Walski, Executive Director of the Coalition for Medical Marijuana in New Jersey. The mission of our organization is to educate the public about the benefits of marijuana. Marijuana is a safe, effective, and inexpensive therapeutic agent for a wide variety of diseases, symptoms, and conditions. No patient should suffer needlessly without it, and no patient should ever go to jail for following the advice of a doctor. Join us and learn more about the exciting science of medical marijuana. Welcome to CMMNJ TV. I'm Ken Walski, Executive Director of the Coalition for Medical Marijuana in New Jersey. I'm a registered nurse, and I've been an RN in New Jersey for 39 years now, and executive director of the Coalition for Medical Marijuana for about 10 years. I'm here in the Princeton Community TV studios via Skype with Josh Gilbert. Josh is the uh, documentarian who did an excellent documentary on uh, Tommy Chong, uh, the uh, arrest of Tommy Chong and uh, incarceration uh, for nine months. Uh, uh, called AKA Tommy Chong, which I just saw the other day, uh, oh, Josh, yeah. and I just want to tell you how much I enjoyed your documentary on Tommy Chong. Thanks a lot. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, I think it really was wonderful. You had terrific access to Tommy. You must be very close to him uh, to, to get that kind of access. I mean, it's just very, very personal uh, experiences, you know, before he went to jail and all. Uh, just, uh, I, I thought it was a, a very moving documentary and very informative. Yeah, it was um, it was an interesting um, development and, and, and I guess sequence of events that led to it. I, 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 I have known Tommy for many years. I knew him for many years prior to his uh, his run in with with uh, with the federal government. We had been writing partners um, years prior to that and had been friends when he got, you know, the knock on the door at 530 in the morning. Mm -hmm. uh, on that fateful February day in 2003, um, and I called him immediately, and I thought it was a publicity stunt. That's what I've always said, and 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 he said no, it was very real, and and that's when the conversation started. And several months later, um, we were talking about another project, and I said, "What you're going through is really the story. We have to we have to tell that story." And he said that he couldn't because he. Uh, he was compelled when he was indicted to say that he wouldn't make a film about it. So that's when I said, "Well, I, I wasn't. I didn't have to sign a minute order or do anything. So I'll, I'll tell the story." Um, and and I did. And and I was. I actually, in retrospect, kind of wish I had. I don't know. You you never know as as a creative when you make something if you did what you should have done. I, there there was a much more personal story to have. You know, told, but I, I was trying to make a political statement. I suppose I'm a, I'm a, I wanted, I wanted to, I wanted to make a, a bigger statement than a than, than just a personal um, documentary or a personal sort of. I like that stylistically, the intimacy of a of a smaller film. But I, I was, I was, I guess I was swinging for the fences in terms of the message, and and the anger that I felt, I felt you know required a sort of a broader. Uh, philosophical and political backdrop you know but I do have a more intimate film I mean there's like a thousand films you can make with with every documentary that people make I mean the average documentary takes two to seven years and by the time you're done you have hundreds of hours and how you choose to sculpt that you know I guess that's mm -hmm. that's that's what it comes down to but it was okay. a very long-winded response but. <laughs> no 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 fine uh, yeah. I, I, you know, I think you managed to do both in that, uh, make a, a personal statement about Tommy Chong, you know, his experiences before he went to prison and, and the kind of things that he was going through uh, and, uh, and, and what, a, what, a, what a moving and, uh, experience it was being in prison uh, and, and being released from prison, you know, when he, when he kneels down and kisses the steps going back to his house in Los Angeles, you know. That's, that's great, yeah. You know, uh, that, that, that I think I think he really accomplished the personal and and certainly the political as well. I mean, when you talk about, I mean, just that story tells itself. You know, the the twelve million dollars that the the federal government used to prosecute uh, Tommy Chung for for making bongs. You know, um, it, it, and you know, selling one to to a, a, a 
place in Pennsylvania that where where it was forbidden and 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 how how uh, the federal government just targeted Tommy, you know, to, yeah. to uh, be, be and, and and the absurdity of it. I mean, the absolute absurdity of going after a comedian for a character that he's playing. Uh, you know, to me, that that was, that was the major thing that that really uh, stuck with me after that uh, that documentary. And so, you know, I thought it, it was both personal and political, my my own self. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I appreciate those comments. Thanks. Yeah, the. Um, you know, the, just to say, I mean, uh, I, I saw where Ethan Nadelman, you, you, you mentioned that, that uh, uh, Tommy Chong's bond case was the ultimate absurdity in the war on drugs. And, um, you know, to me, that's, that's quite a statement coming from, you know, one of the top drug policy reformers in the nation because, you know, he must be aware of all of the absurdities of the war on drugs, the, uh, you know, the insistence that marijuana isn't medicine, the... Uh, the creation of this, these, uh, the violent criminal en enterprises by 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 keeping marijuana illegal, and the mm -hmm. the destruction of people's lives um, uh, in, in an ever failing effort to keep marijuana from them, and and a trillion dollar effort to reduce drug use, and yet marijuana is more available, it's stronger, it's cheaper than ever, and and the violence associated with the drug trade is is um, uh, ever escalating. So you know to. To say that this is the ultimate absurdity in the war on drugs really is is saying quite a bit, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, that's 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 one of your guys, right, Ethan Nadelman, Princeton. Yeah. Yes. Yes. He he originally was a professor right here in Princeton, right? You know, I want to. I can interject. I'd like to actually, just because you're an RN at Princeton. My grandmother was uh, was a was a nurse at Princeton Hospital. Oh, how about that? And she was actually the the claim to fame there when she was Einstein's nurse. Um, oh. When he died, because he would speak Yiddish sometimes, and no one, no one spoke Yiddish, and mm -hmm. or I guess not as well as my grandmother did. So, mm -hmm. but anyway, I worked in some of the area hospitals. I worked at Carrier Clinic right right up the road in Bell Mead, and I worked down in Trenton, and I worked in summer, uh, I worked in Central Jersey. Right. I did 22 years in the prison system too, Josh. Oh, as, wow. a, as a nurse uh, in the New Jersey prison system, so you know, I mean, I, you know, when Tommy talks about prison changing people, I, uh, you know, I, 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 I've seen this thousands of times, you know, in in the type of you know humiliation and mortification that that prisoners go through when they when they enter into the system, and yeah. I'll, tell you, I'll tell you, it's it's a rare person that comes out a better person from the prison system. Uh, but Tommy Chong may be one of the rare people who actually did become a better person because of the experience. Yeah, that uh, that's part of the humiliation and degradation of the whole experience. And then what he had to register as a narcotics offender when he got to when he got back home in L.A. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, geez, and and he has to go at four o'clock in the morning to to go and I register. Remember, I remember. You know, the, well, I remember the call. I remember. I mean, it, yeah. Just how how humiliating and and you know just uncomfortable can that be? Could they could they yeah. make it any less comfortable? It's not a it's not a, it's not a human equation. It's crazy. I mean, I'm going through right now. I'm going through. Uh, I know that as a segue. I mean, I'm going through. Uh, I'm in the Northeast, which is much different than California. I mean, from LA. I was born in LA, raised in LA, for the most part, and uh, lived there for a good part of my life. And then came here 20 years ago, to New York. My, but but the culture in California and on the West Coast is much different than than the Northeast. And, I'm in. I, I, I'm. I'm battling leukemia right now, um, and Tommy's battling. Why well, he's not? He's not as far into it. I think it wasn't as as, as advanced, or um, it, it hadn't metastasized. But he had prostate. He's had. He has prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. You know, I have. I have. I have leukemia. I'm like in full on chemo right now, and uh, and the lack of flexibility that I sense from people around pot. In, in in New York, in in this preeminent cancer center where I'm getting my treatment, it's just amazing to me how how behind the times people are here about smoking and about and about using you know marijuana as medicine because it really I mean I I, I use I mean you know what Zofran is you know Zofran sublingual mm -hmm. to uh, to mitigate the, the the nausea nothing nothing works better than and pot. Nothing even right, comes right. close to it, you mm -hmm. know. And sometimes, in the, you know, when I'm feeling the side effects of chemo, and I'm and I'm waking up in the morning and I feel terrible. Nothing, nothing makes me feel better than you know than a bag of, of vape, you know, like mm -hmm. uh, 
good, good, you know, or, or even taking an edible or something like that. It's just medicinally, it's just, it's very effective. And it's ridiculous that it's not, I mean, Marinol is offered, I could get a prescription for Marinol every day, all day. I mean, no one cares about that. Mm -hmm. But why, why does separating out an alkaloid, you know, make the, make it any better? I mean, if trichomes and the THC and the CBD and all the, the various biochemical components of, of marijuana are, are what they are, and they're derived from the plant. Why it has to be packaged by, you know, I don't know, Bristol Myers Squibb or any whoever. I mean, it's ridiculous to me. Well, the, well, the, that, the system is ridiculous. That may, that may well be that you may well have touched your, you know, put your finger on the the issue right there of the uh, the Bristol Myers Squibbs, the big uh, the big pharmaceutical industries. You know, have the poli you know they buy politicians so. Politicians make the rules, and um, you know, we, it, it, New, New York has such a, a long and tortured history of, uh, of marijuana reform. You know, we, we, there, there has been a bill in, in, your, in your legislature there for about 18 years before it finally passed. You know, and, and then how did it pass? And what a cool! I can't believe I can't. I just, you know, I don't know. When I saw the way he was, I went right to. I made it. I made a point of voting for Teach Out because. I'm just so disappointed in Cuomo. I just can't believe yeah. who he is, you know, mm -hmm. and that he's Mario's son. You know, I just, I, I, I don't know. I just had a lot more affection for Mario Cuomo than I do for his, mm -hmm. for his, for his, for his, you know, son who seems bought and paid for from just completely. Yeah. But I mean, the way they limited it to edibles and the way they limited the number of service providers and people that have the ability to dispense the edibles eventually, and just it's so cumbersome and it's so money driven. What I'm waiting for now, you know, is for when the federal government says, okay, forget it, let it go, mm -hmm. or if the scheduling changes from schedule one, I mean, I don't know if, if, if it would even be scheduled, but if there's some, if the law changes on a federal level, um, how that will affect the state laws will be kind of interesting. Yeah, I, 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 th I think it'll be, have a tr tremendous uh, effect on the state laws. Uh, you know, if, if it, uh, just getting it out of the federal Schedule 1, uh, I, I think that right. will really uh, do, do an awful lot towards uh, normalizing the use of, uh, of marijuana in, in this country. Right. Um, you know, what, a, what a huge lie that is, though, the Schedule 1 mm -hmm. denomination. I mean, it's ridiculous. It is, absolutely, Josh. Josh. Yeah, yeah. You know, to say that marijuana has no accepted medical uses in the United States, and here 23 states accept the use. Uh, it's it's uh, uh, countless patients use it. Uh, numerous healthcare organizations support it. My own uh, nurses associations. Yeah, uh, I mean, 5,000 years of medical history. I right. mean, it's just obviously right. everyone brings that up, but it's right. just so true. And those tincture bottles from the 1800s or the early 1900s, all the way up to when. You yeah. know, Harry Anslinger, yeah. this, yeah, you know, this moon in the federal government, you know, put marijuana, the plant in his sights and, and, and vilified it. It's just amazing. The prohibition on, 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 on this plant is just ridiculous. Yeah. Is that what were you holding up? Was that oh, it's uh, just one of our little brochures, but that has, um, you know, from a, a, a bottle of cannabis indica from 1906. Right. So, was, yeah. You know, exactly. Just, you know, I mean, marijuana was used in in America. It was a, it was accepted in a medicine as a medicine longer than it's been prohibited. It's only been prohibited for like seventy five years, and it's, it was used for over a hundred years. Yeah. Uh, numerous. Well, that's, uh, yeah, that's a smear campaign. That's what yeah. a smear campaign can do. It's just a man. You know, when you when you put a witch on the stake and you burn her, you know, it's like. Yeah. And of course, it's not only, you know, Schedule One means it's not only that. Uh, uh, it, there's no accepted medical use, but uh, it has a high potential for abuse, and that there's an accept there's a lack of accepted safety for its use, even under medical supervision, even in the, even in the finest medical centers in in New York and in Philadelphia. You know, it's too yeah. dangerous to be used there. Sorry, no, you can't I, get it by prescription. I, <laughs> I've never, I have not verified this, but I had a nurse at at, uh, at my hospital at MSK Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer mm -hmm. Center, where I'm I'm doing my treatment now. And um, and this nurse told me that in the 80s, I guess as recently as the 80s, it was very common for, for patients to smoke because mm -hmm. it made them feel better. Right. And um, and uh, pot and and I guess the NYPD came in, the New York Police Department came in, and they and they 
put the kibosh on it, or for whatever reason, the hospital administration stopped it. I'm not sure of the specifics of that, but in response to that prohibition in the hospital, these two research scientists at MSK developed Ativan. Uh, it's, a, it's a tranquilizer, Ativan, essentially. But um, the um, back in the day, well, you know, I became a nurse in '76, and you know, back when I was in, in uh, school, um, back when I started practicing in, in the ICUs and CCUs in Central Jersey, you know, the nurses we could smoke in the hospitals, you know, smoke cigarettes, uh, and we would uh, we we would smoke right out in the nurses' lounge, right outside the uh, nurses uh, outside the ICU. So um, and. Typically, cancer patients, you know, nurses would just, you know, turn a blind eye when they use marijuana in the in the cancer wards. Um, you know, right. They would just allow that because they, they they would see how much how much good it would do their patients. You know, the the choice would be: do you want to carry buckets of vomit back and forth, you know, all day, or do you want to let this patient, you know, use marijuana in the hospital room and yeah. and, and control his nausea? It's like the Republicans going after, you know. Yeah, just this, just the political smear campaigns. You can do so much damage to an idea or to a person by just making them seem terrible. Right, right. They really tried to do that with Tommy. I, I mean, that was an amazing thing for me to see. I mean, in the beginning when he was um, vilified, it was post 9/11, and there was this incredibly jingoistic, um, nationalistic, bordering on fascistic, fascistic. Um, atmosphere in Los Angeles at the time, post 9-11, and, and Vanity Fair came in to do an article about Tommy before he went to prison, um, and that's its own long story, but, but the writer from Vanity Fair called me and tried to get me, I mean, I, mean I, I grew up in L.A. and I do know some people, but not to the level, not at the same level that Vanity Fair would know people, and they, I could... They couldn't get anyone to say something positive about him because he was so. I mean, he got the last laugh, and and he came out of the situation. He came out of it, you know, doing really well. But even Cheech, I mean, Cheech, unin dis what what's the word? Uninvited him to his birthday party. <laughs> Cheech did not invite him to his birthday party after the bust. I mean, after he was busted, before he went to prison, mm -hmm. there was this moment where. No one would say anything on his behalf. Everyone kind of steered clear. You know what I mean? It was yeah. really, he really was, you know, it was like the scarlet A, except it was the scarlet P. I mean, Polly Shore, you know, what, what's, what's a Polly Shore movie? You know the comedian Polly Shore? He was the MTV host, and he, you know, he's, uh, he's uh, the comedy store on Sunset Boulevard. He's, that's his family. And, um, I interviewed him. I didn't include it in the doc. It was one of the one of the outtakes. But he he actually reprimanded Tommy on film for for. He said, "What do you expect? You're walking around and you're the human embodiment of pot. I mean, what do you think you're going to get busted? But why would mm -hmm. you get busted? And no no one really really was amazing. Even Teach, you know, stayed away from him. That's something. It is something. It's crazy. But but, you know, he wasn't. I mean, my understanding is he really wasn't the human embodiment of pot. I mean, he, he was living a, a quiet life in a very nice section of Los Angeles uh, when, when he got busted. And, you know, he had this bond show, you know, this bond business. Uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't his business. It was his, it was his son. I mean, his son's an opportunist and, you know, has always sort of leveraged his own, you know. But, he, you know, he's, 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 he's personally gotten a lot of, uh, you know, social currency from, you know, from being a Chong. I mean, mm -hmm. celebrity kids are, are mm -hmm. their own phenomenon. I grew up in L.A. around it. I mean, I grew up in those same neighborhoods, so I knew fame. It wasn't, that wasn't a choice that, that, that Tommy made because Tommy wasn't in the equation on that level. I mean, mm -hmm. he was sort of the, the branding and the friendly face on the Millie on the bong, but he wasn't really involved in the day-to-day -day operations of the mm -hmm. place. But he represented, you know, a target to the federal government and they went after him because this, this completely imbecile prosecutor out, out of Pittsburgh who married into this very elite um, um, patriarchal family in Pittsburgh wanted to make a name for herself, Mary Beth Buchanan. Right. I'm not, I'm not, I don't know what her, I can't remember what her maiden name is, but the Buchanans are very prominent people in Pittsburgh. I've actually, Tommy, Tommy, I mean, I was, Depends I was on where a, you are. I was, 
I was in a support group um, downtown. Gilda Radner from SNL. You know, um, Jean mm -hmm. Wilder is her uh, is her widow. Um, Jean Wilder started this club called Gilda's Club down. You know, in the in the village here between mm -hmm. the village and Soho. I live in the West Village in New York, and 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 I guess Gilda's Club is right on the border of. I guess it's on the northern tip of Soho. Mm -hmm. But um, I go there for support groups sometimes, and the people. Those support groups can't get they don't have any access to it yeah. I mean New York is really I mean you can you can call services and you can do it surreptitiously people get it from their kids and stuff like that or from but they don't know what's in the bag there's nothing medicinal about it right it's you know people Tommy can get access for it legally mm -hmm. and you know people in Oregon and almost half the states in the country, but New York's really behind the times. It's crazy. Yeah. You know, on the other hand, Connecticut's kind of loosening up, and if Christie weren't governor, it would be legal and, you know, it would be accessible in Jersey because they've passed the laws for it, right? You're in Jersey now. Yeah, we're in Jersey. We, uh, yeah, our organization formed before there was a, before there was a law. We, we've been around for over 10 years now, and, uh, you know, uh, our bill was introduced in 2005, and it passed into, into law in 2010. But as you said, the Christie administration has been, really been um, just uh, uh, restricting access to medical marijuana far more than the legislative intent was. But why, though? That's what I don't understand. One of the things that was shocking to me when I put the film out was the number of Republicans and Libertarians. And it was, I think, one of the reasons the film was successful, too. And I mean, I guess still get, you know, I mean, you're calling me. I mean, it's out there. You know, it's, it's a, uh, it's, uh, it appeals to such a broad range of people. And I, I don't, th I mean, Republican, all Republic. what Republican doesn't smoke pot? I mean, Republicans <laughs> smoke pot. You know, right. it would be a no-brainer about why a politician would would not want to support an issue that everyone else supports. I mean, it, it's got stronger numbers than motherhood and apple pie, for God's sake. Uh, but well, but also, it's also baby. core you know Republican values too. You know, I mean, you know, uh, 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 taking care of yourself, uh, uh, a small right. government. Uh, you know, the the prohibition of marijuana seems to really run counter to so many traditional Republican ideals that it really is difficult to understand why why there is so much resistance in, in the know, Republican Party but but there I mean there really was a great divide it was it was a it was a terrific victory to get Republican assemblymen and Republican senators here in the state of New Jersey to support medical marijuana uh, so you know I, I don't know why there there seems to be a disconnect between and it has to go back to following the money I think but I think I think that's it, and I actually, I mean, I was starting. I, I'm I'm mystified that Bridgegate hasn't done more damage to Christie, based on my experience with Tommy, and 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 the federal government and Eric Schlosser, who's a voice in my documentary, and a, right. you know, and a great thinker and a progressive thinker and a progressive intellectual. Um, you know, who actually told me the statistic that the federal government has a better. Uh, prosecution rate than Torquemada during the Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> I mean, 98% of all federal prosecutions are successful. I mean, the disconnect that you identify before, like why would he be acting that way? So, you know, obviously he's not, he's not responsive to a broader constituency if 86% of the people are in favor of medical marijuana, but maybe, you know, maybe there's one person who's writing him a check, you right. know, who is... Mm -hmm either affiliated with some interest that, that, you know, that runs counter to the, you know, to that 86% uh, that right, wants right. to be legal. I mean, who, I don't know, is it a beer? Is it the Koch brothers? Is it some... Well, some, the, you know, the usual sus suspects we identify are, you know, the pharmaceutical industry, the uh, alcoholic beverage industry, the, the prison industrial complex with, right. uh, you know, the substance, with, which is a huge industry in, in New Jersey and in the country. Uh, right. You know, when I when I was in the prison system, uh, I was there from 1984 to 2006, and in in those 22 years, we saw the the prison in the, the prison population triple just in the time that I worked there. So, you know, it it goes way beyond you know food service and medical services to right. uh, you know drug testing and uh, substance well, you know, abuse. So, it, it is a it is a major industry that uh, there is tremendous amount of money in keeping marijuana illegal and continuing what we have now. I, I really feel like they need to be honored and remembered, you know. And uh, it's not just it's not just rap songs, and you know, and 
and t-shirt sales and you know and vape pens and the commercial aspects of it there's this there's this human you know story behind it it's uh i think often eclipsed you know mm -hmm. um, we're finding that the bigger and tougher these police are uh, the bigger their hearts are because a lot of these cops know people with cancer and know people with PTSD and other horrible diseases. And we're approaching okay. them with respect and we're approaching no, them. Good. Yeah. That's, that, that, that's the key, I think. Yeah. You know, not, not, not too. No, that's uh, true. That's right. true. I, I, and I want to be too over. I mean, I've met great. I mean, I was here for 9-11. I mean, there were great heroes, you know, in badges and with guns. I mean, it's just, it's just when you, when you, when you're, when you're, uh, you know, when you're challenging someone like that with humor, and you're and you're forcing them to consider their their preconceptions about pot. But I mean, I that sounds like that sounds like that sounds like the type of story that a lot of media outlets would would, would really be would really be intri intrigued by. And I know that there's online publicity um, resources. You can get like an online publicist. I mean, a lot of times when publicists go out their stories, they just do a mass blanket and they just put it out there through these certain channels and not you know and, and then radio shows I mean it sounds like what you're doing is uh, what you're doing is really newsworthy I appreciate your encouragement your suggestions yeah. and, 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 and all of your help and I appreciate you coming on CMM and JTV today Josh it Thanks was really a, really a terrific pleasure speaking with you and yeah. meeting you and uh, and seeing the face behind the uh, behind this wonderful documentary that I just got from Netflix and I'm going to be returning tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate it. For more information about the Coalition for Medical Marijuana in New Jersey, join us at our free public meeting on the second Tuesday of every month at the Lawrence Township Library in Mercer County, New Jersey, 7 to 9 p.m. Snacks are served and all are welcome. Remember, every 42 seconds, someone is arrested for marijuana. Every 42 seconds, someone is arrested for marijuana. Every 42 seconds, somebody's arrested for marijuana. Every 42 seconds, someone is arrested for marijuana. Every 42 seconds, someone's arrested for marijuana. Every 42 seconds, someone is arrested for marijuana. Every 42 seconds, somebody is arrested for marijuana. Every 42 seconds, somebody is arrested for marijuana. Every 42 seconds, someone is arrested for marijuana. Cada 42 segundo. Está uno arrestado por marihuana. Every 42 seconds, somebody is arrested for... Every 42 seconds, someone in this country is arrested for marijuana. Shotgun dice con ya de Every 42 seconds, someone is arrested for marijuana. Every 42 seconds, someone is arrested for marijuana, lefty. Every 42 seconds, someone is arrested for marijuana. <laughs> Every 42 seconds, Someone is arrested for marijuana. It could be you.